All right, guys. Um, so let's take a look at this short answer question. All right. First off, very important. Yes. Let's read the question carefully. Answer all parts, all this stuff. But the key thing is use your knowledge of world history to answer all parts of the question that follows. And so what that means is that we're going to you know, get some information here, right, as we read this article or we read this passage. But we, what they're really trying to draw from us is, do we have knowledge outside of this article um, that we bring to bear on the article? And are we able to use, and that's when they talk about contextualization, like are we able to see how things fit together, um, the, the bigger picture? It's kind of like what we were talking about with the puzzle box. Do we understand the bigger picture? Are we able to pull examples from different places? So let's just take a look here. And it says, identify and explain one histor specific historical example that supports Diamond's argument about the importance of the agricultural revolution. So let's make sure we got each piece. We're gonna identify and explain, which means we can't just identify, right? We have to explain it. And we want a specific historical example that supports his argument. What's his argument? Basically, agricultural revolution is not all good, maybe even lots bad because of you know, disease and um, the disease that comes from people crowding into cities and also the lack of a, ver a varied diet, right? And also a uh, greater likelihood or greater risk of famine. Okay, so that's his argument. Whether we agree with it or not, it's his argument. Um, and so the, our student here uh, restates the argument, which is good. He argues that agriculture leads to crowded societies and spread of disease, maybe even throw in the stuff. And then uh, one specific historical example that supports it. So a historical example that supports this argument, his argument is the bubonic plague. But what you've really done at that point is identified the example. You haven't explained it, right? So you, you know that there is the bubonic plague or is the Black Death, but you don't then necessarily, or the student doesn't necessarily explain that you know uh, the Black Death occurred because of um, trade coming into cities and uh, it's spreading because of the overcrowding, it, you, the, you just identified. And so you probably got, or the student probably got a point or half a point or something for the identification, but then the explanation wasn't there. So just think about that, you know, at, at, you know, you can even look at it from the length. You might want to, you need to do a couple of, you do a good, the student does a good summary, right? The example shows that condensed, or I might say concentrated populations lead to the spread of disease or the disease is more likely to spread in concentrated populations. But I think that there needs to be more there about the historical example, which means you need to have some historical examples. So as you're reading, what's good, I'm sorry, as you're going through class, you're going to have a lot of good examples or a lot of good stuff. And you just want to bring that all together uh, to do your answers. But I would say that this one doesn't have enough of an explanation. Good identification, good example, just not enough explanation. All right. So let's look at the second one. Identify and explain one specific historical example that challenges Diamond's argument. All right. So let's go back to what Diamond's argument is. Basically, it's that uh you know the what's the isn't there a title it's um you know that okay here it is it was a catastrophe from which we have never recovered okay so that's his argument about the agricultural revolution so what would challenge that all right so we our student says argues that agriculture is bad for society historical example by the way my opinion on this and historical example is because it starts with an H when you pronounce it, you would say a historical example, okay? Um, not a, oh, and actually, yeah, this would be a historical example that disproves his argument is the Silk Road, okay? So you've identified an example, and then you explain, this example shows that due to agriculture, trade and transportation were able to grow. So what you need to do here would be explain more, right? You need to say, um, while Diamond says that agriculture is bad for society because it leads to concentration, etc., honestly, I don't think this art, this example disproves that or even challenges that argument because his argument isn't that uh, trade is bad 
for society, right? Or transportation is bad for society. You could make the argument that the Silk Road only would have occurred or only occurs because of agriculture. So it leads to greater contact between civilizations and greater contact between civilizations leads to, you know, positivity in some ways. But th this doesn't really challenge his argument from my perspective. So I would choose a different example. You know, you might say uh, agriculture leads to, um, you know, a more stable, in many cases, a more stable food supply. I know that they talk about famines, but it leads to a more stable food supply. Uh, maybe it leads to increased lifespans because people aren't subject to marauders as much. They have more they have more greater protections in cities, even though with the disease, they still have more protection. Um, but this is where you need to pick your example carefully. And I don't know that I would use the Silk Road, but if I did, I would really have to explain how. OK, so again, in that point, I think we're falling a little short from what you want to aspire to in terms of of making of picking an example and arguing and arguing it or explaining the importance. So then. Third one, identify and explain one way in which scholarly disciplines, okay, outside of history have contributed to the scholarly perspectives described in Diamond. Well, what does that even mean? Well, what that means, the way I interpret that is um, he's talking about history, right? He's, his, he's doing a historical analysis, but what else outside of history um, would uh, contribute to, his pers to the perspective? Well, the one that I saw, the clearest one that I saw, which is a kind of a cheat, right, is archaeology, because archaeology is prehistory. It's using physical uh, artifacts, et cetera, and not the writings, whereas history is purely about after, you know, once we start having written history. So, you know, the student says a scholarly discipline that contributed to Diamond's claims is a physician. I think that's a misunderstanding of what uh, the question is asking. A scholarly discipline would be something like uh, economics or history or uh, uh, archaeology or sociology or something like that. Not necessarily. A sp I mean, it could arguably be medicine, um, but I don't think that's a good example for this particular question. So I would look at the one that I that jumped up for me was archaeology because it says. Some archaeologists think that it was crowding rather than ar agriculture that promoted disease. Um, you know, you could do something about economics. Uh, you could do something. I mean, honestly, there is the, the concept of um, right here of, you know, nutrition or anatomy or biology. Uh, and that might be what the student is talking about here when they say is a physician. But you might say a scholarly discipline that contributed to Diamond's claims is biology or anatomy, and then you'd explain, right? So you'd say the discipline explains why eating uh, an agricultural generated, um, an agricultural generated diet is not as good for somebody as, uh, as a hunting and gathering diet. Or maybe it's talking about kinesiology or physical education or something like that. But I think you have to re you're going to want to reference a specific discipline and then really explain it. So I think this is a, another place where um, I think in the first one, it was a good example, but not explained as well as we want. The second one, it's an OK example. I would prefer a different example and then explain better. And then this one, I just think that it's probably didn't didn't hit the right example or a, an example that actually is a scholarly discipline. Um, and so then we just didn't get it. So. That's it's tough, right? I mean, this is what this is all about. And really what you want to start thinking about is adding, um, you know, is paying attention as you're learning history to where are there examples of patterns or where are there things that we can use as, um, you know, historical events, historical developments, concepts, uh, uh, empires, people, etc., that we can use as examples. The, the one that I always talk to my daughter about, and I call these generalizations, um, not that this is, has to be a generalization, but the one that I talk to my daughter about is there's a generalization or a pattern throughout history, which is um, opposing forces will 
combine together. They'll team up against a rival or against an enemy. But once that rival or enemy is banished or vanquished or, or beaten, then those the, the forces that led to those uh, people being rivals reemerge and they come into conflict. And we see that with Athens and Sparta combining, right, teaming up against the Persians. But then when the Persians are defeated, Athens and Sparta go at it. Uh, we see that with even the American Revolution to some extent. You know, the colonists and the British, they uh, join forces against the in the French and Indian War. But when the French are no longer a threat in the Americas, uh, those old conflicts come back um, and, and lead to, you know, the American Revolution. We see it with uh, the United States and the Soviet Union in uh, World War II, right? They combine forces to beat Nazism, and then they leads to the Cold War. And you see that over and over again throughout history. So what you want to be looking for as you're listening and as you're reading are things like that. And what Jared Diamond is talking about is kind of an unintended consequence of a development or a technology, right? The uh, we. We have this agricultural revolution, which enables us to grow our own food. It leads to concentration in cities. It leads to writing. It leads to wealth uh, development. It leads to building. It leads to architecture. But it also leads to potentially disease. And same thing with trade, going back to your Silk Road. Trade is great. It expands wealth. It uh, leads to contact between civilizations that might lead to you know, new uh influences, etc. But it can also bring forward, you know, rats that have flies or fleas on them that uh, carry the uh, Black Death. And it can decimate or, or well beyond decimate uh, the um, population of Europe uh, in the 1300s. So um, those are the types of things that uh, as you're learning, you want what these, these um, your tests and your writings are really exploring are, are you able to bring things from outside of your reading to illustrate, to challenge, to you know, uh, make, it, make it all come together. And so we're just going to keep doing it. Please send me your writings uh, and we'll keep um, sort of driving through this and, and looking for examples. And I'd be happy to give you feedback as we've said. Okay.